This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Eric Morton of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to make sure that you never miss the latest from Disney theme parks around the world. Here now is the news for June 17, 2024. Disney artist Ashley Taylor has designed a new Sleeping Beauty home collection now available at Disneyland Resort. We found items from the collection at Disneyana and Disney Home. First up is a throw pillow for $49.99. The throw pillow is made of blue velvet and gold trim. Each side features a printed image of Aurora in her ball gown. She's holding a basket and the three fairies fly around her. There are embroidered pink, purple, and orange flowers. On one side of the pillow, her dress is blue. On the other, it's pink. The designs have blue and green embroidered borders. The pillow is 12 inches by 12 inches. Uh, each item includes a special tag or packaging, marking it as designed by Taylor. The inside of the tag reads, Ashley Taylor is an artist who grew up loving the Disney princesses. Her Sleeping Beauty collection is a celebration of Princess Aurora, a princess who inspires us all to dream big, lead with kindness, and see the beauty in ourselves and others. The throw blanket is 50 inches by 60 inches. It comes folded and tied with a yellow gold ribbon. The design, as shown inside the tag, sees Aurora standing in a doorway below a golden structure. She's wearing her pink dress. Her kingdom unfolds in front of her with the three fairies pictured flying over the castle in the distance. The background of the design is blue with a foliage pattern inspired by Aurora's time living in the forest. It sells for $84.99. Uh, the wooden reading stand can be used to prop up a book, maybe a computer tablet, and more. The back is inspired by the Sleeping Beauty storybook with two carved pages displaying artwork of Aurora with her animal friends, of course, and they're asleep in the bed. In front of the book is a trench for propping up your book. A kickstand is on the back, makes the piece adjustable for sitting or standing, sells for $44.99. The golden trinket tray is inspired by the crown that hangs above Princess Aurora's crib. It has a pointed center and two rounded features on the sides. There's a foliage pattern across the outside. The inside is flat. The gold metal is reflective. Aurora's own crown is also of a similar design. It sells for $29.99. The mirror resembles a tall standing mirror but is small enough to sit on a desk. It can also be hung on the wall. It has a golden frame with a design on top inspired by Aurora's crown. A squirrel and rabbit are in the corner of the frame. It has a kickstand and a hang hanging hardware bit there. It sells for $39.99. The tapestry comes on a golden stick with a braided rope for hanging. It depicts Aurora as Briar Rose sitting in the forest with her animal friends. The three fairies float above her. Aurora's reflection in the water below shows her in the blue ball gown. The artwork has royal purple borders decorated with light purple and golden patterns. The exterior border is blue. The back is white. It's 17.5 inches by 9.5 inches. It sells for $39.99. Now there's a jewelry box. It has a similar golden finish to that mirror. It's 10.75 inches by 4.25 inches. Uh, it features two doors with a clasp at the center. The doors open to reveal artwork of flora, fauna, and Meriwether in the back of the box. A chandelier for the necklace or bracelets hangs inside the box. There are two purple flocked drawers with golden handles. There are also two hooks on the inside of each door. Sells for $80. Uh, these are also supposedly available at Disney World and uh, Disneyland Paris, so keep your eyes peeled. Disney has filed a permit for a big Thunder Mountain Railroad refurbishment possibly indicating the beginning of the Beyond Big Thunder expansion project at Magic Kingdom. As first reported by Dan LB underscore 2000, DC Baker, and many others in the forums of WDW Magic, Disney has filed a general construction permit for a major refurbishment of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. The permit assigned to Coastal Steel Incorporated is set to expire on August 8th of 2025. This provides a slightly longer time frame than the typical one year these permits are generally assigned for. While this refurbishment for Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is expected to make necessary updates to the beloved attraction, we have also heard rumors that this closure will likely coincide with the Beyond Big Thunder uh, Mountain expansion. Uh, Beyond Big Thunder was first announced at D23 Expo in 2022. Initial rumors surrounding the project included themed lands dedicated to Pixar's Coco, Encanto, and Disney villains. Since then, Disney has continued to provide more information. At D23 back in September of 2023, the project was described as the largest in Magic Kingdom history and similar in scope to Pandora, the world of Avatar, and Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. 
In January of this year, Disney teased more announcements regarding Frontierland. In April, Disney began the process of fil filing permits for the expansion. Today's permit is first filed concerning Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Initial rumors indicate that the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad closure could last for more than a year and begin as early as later this summer. We expect we'll get some updates on this project at D23 in August. Walls have been erected outside of Test Track as it closes today for reimagining. The walls feature a brand new Test Track logo, part of which was revealed during the release of concept art for the reimagined attraction. The new logo continues the old ride's color scheme of black, blue, and white, but the font has been changed and sits in front of three hexagons now. While the attraction's font had previously been revealed, the hexagons are a new development. At the bottom of the sign, coming soon, is written in yellow. Gray walls have gone up around the entrance to the attraction. In the photo that we have here, the old Test Track logo is visible above the Symporium. In the old logo, the front was very sharp instead of the rounded bubble letters featured in the new logo. The ride's old logo also featured the final T in Test and the first T in Track merging to create one letter. In the new logo, Test is slightly higher than the Track. Both words stand on their own. We spotted construction workers already starting the ride's refurbishment. As we reported over the weekend, the reimagining materials were already on property and visible during the outside portion of the attraction. Therefore, it's not surprising to see work beginning without delay. One portion of the gray walls features a directional sign for guests. It points guests towards the park exit and restrooms to the left and to World Showcase to the right. Test Track is undergoing its first reimagining since a nearly eight-month-long refurb back in 2012. Uh, General Motors remains the attraction sponsor and the Chevrolet branding will remain in place after this refurbishment is complete. Imagineers have stated that the reimagined attraction will be inspired by World of Motion, the attraction at Test Track replaced before opening in 1998. After the refurbishment, Test Track will feature the spirit of optimism that was present in the now closed attraction. Also, a new Epcot Park entrance sign has been installed to match the updated logo style. The new park entrance sign sits back on the, on the sod, away from the path. It's located at the bus stop entrance and has an arrow directing guests to follow the correct path to the park entrance. The sign features the new Epcot typographical logo and font style. The letters are outlined in the same gray as the base of the sign, which has a blue stripe across the bottom. The color matches that of World Celebration, the Epcot neighborhood that guests enter at the front of the park. Also, uh, with the years-long reimagining complete, a new Epcot guide map featuring the new experiences throughout the park, such as Mickey and Friends meet and greet, is available now. The image on the front of the new guide map features a family of three watching fireworks from Luminous, the Symphony of Us. And the fireworks explode in night sky over World Showcase Lagoon. The image replaces the previous guide map cover displaying Figment as guests would encounter him at his meet and greet in the Imagination Pavilion. The park's map now displays Communicore Hall and Plaza southwest of Spaceship Earth. In the previous map, this area was shown as green grass. Luminous, the Symphony of Us, is no longer labeled as new on the park map. The nighttime spectacular also features a description that reads, Dazzling fireworks unite us as citizens of the Earth. The new map also features the new experiences available to guests in the Communicore Hall area. The new character meet and greet, Mickey and Friends, is listed under attractions. Though the description does not specify which characters guests will have the opportunity to meet on that day, Mickey, Minnie, and Goofy uh, seem to all be regulars at the attraction, with some others rotating in here and there. A new quick service restaurant, Festival Favorites, is now listed as a dining option in World Celebration. This new location highlights foods available to guests during Epcot festivals throughout the year. Noticeably missing from this section of the map is Celebracion Encanto, the new stage show that's performed daily at the Communicore Plaza stage. The final major item of note is that Test Track is still present on the map. The recently closed attraction is listed as closed temporarily for reimagination. Nothing new has been added to the World Showcase area since the latest Epcot guide map debuted in December of last year. Real quick, I did promise to pick a winner for a Stage 89 magnet a couple weeks ago when I was wearing the Topo Chico shirt. That winner has been selected. You can email me at ericm at www.nt.com with your address and I'll ship that magnet out. The winner is DJ Ricky J. Again, DJ Ricky J, congratulations. Uh, let me know how to send you your magnet. Did you know there's a way you can save big at Disney Deluxe Resorts? Well, today's show is brought to you by DVC Rental Store, a great way for you to plan a luxury Disney vacation on a modest budget. You don't need to sign up for a full DVC contract, but instead they will allow you to rent the points. 
It really is the best way to stay Disney Deluxe at a fraction of the cost. And now, thanks to their lowest price guarantee offer, you will always have the best price on the market. The rooms are discounted up to 75%, and they have the largest member inventory for points, so lots to choose from. You can search their inventory for free right now, which is actually not something all rental companies offer. You probably know that if you've done this before. And if you do choose to book, they have a great cancellation policy and a low down payment. DVC Rental Store is the number one DVC rental company in the U.S. and one that we have used here at WWNT many times. Head over to our description to check it out. To celebrate the 15th anniversary of Up, a new limited edition Carl and Ellie doll set is now available for purchase. We found these dolls at Island Mercantile in Disney's Animal Kingdom, but they can also be found at the Disney Store. The new doll set features young Carl and Ellie dressed in the same clothes they wore to the picnic in the 2009 film. Carl is wearing black pants, dress shoes, a tan jacket, a beige sweater, and blue tie. Ellie is dressed in a yellow checkered dress. They stand next to their mailbox. The doll set comes with a picnic basket full of wine, cheese, bread, and apples. The dolls can lay out on a yellow blanket just as they did on the afternoon together in the film. The back of the box also features a still image from the film. In it, Ellie and Carl lay on their backs on the yellow blanket holding hands. Ellie points in wonder at the sky above her. A camera lays on a blanket next to them. Their picnic basket full of all that stuff is also in the grass next to them. When packaged in their box, Ellie and Carl are holding hands behind a white picket fence with the UP logo. The box panels open to reveal the green grassy hill from the film. Uh, this set sells for $249.99. For the second time this week, we spotted a helicopter filming while flying over various locations around the Walt Disney World Resort. The helicopter's flight path took it all around Walt Disney World Resort, circling over Disney's Hollywood Studios, Epcot, and the Magic Kingdom. Through our research, we discovered that the aircraft is registered in Nashville, Tennessee, to Elite Rotorcraft. The company specializes in aerial production. In the photos, production equipment is visible at the front of the helicopter. In addition to circling the parks, the helicopter also visited some of the resorts. Uh, I also personally observed this helicopter last night, in addition to those two times, hovering uh, just north of the Magic Kingdom, right there during Happily Ever After, probably getting some good fireworks B-roll. Hopefully it looks great. On June 6th, Disney's Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point joined Disney's Castaway Key as one of two private Bahamian enclaves exclusively available to Disney Cruise Line guests. And like Castaway Key, this new destination is more than just beaches. With plenty of offerings ranging from port adventures and, and recreation to cabanas, you want to go into your day at Lighthouse Point prepared. To help you out, we've collected everything you need to know before visiting our full guide to Disney's Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point. You can check our website out for a detailed look. Also, we released a number of videos. I had a full island tour that went live last week, and over the weekend, we have videos just dedicated to the cabanas that are available for rental. Tokyo Disney Resort and Calbi Inc. have created new flavored potato chips inspired by the theme park's classic bone-in sausage snack. All you bone-in sausage fans rejoice. The potato chips come in bags featuring Mickey and Minnie Mouse pictured in front of Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea. The chips look like standard potato chips, but Tokyo Disney Resort promises they taste like that bone-in sausage. The new potato chips will be available beginning on July 17th at World Bazaar Confectionery in Tokyo Disneyland and Valentina's Suites in Tokyo Disney Sea. Disney and Pixar's Inside Out 2 surpassed box office expectations, scoring not only the biggest opening weekend of the year, but also the second highest opening for any animated film in history. Inside Out 2 rode the momentum from Thursday night's previews, earning $155 million domestically and $295 million globally in its opening weekend via deadline. According to Intelligence, Inside Out 2 welcomed 12 million viewers, becoming the first film to cross the 10 million mark since Barbie last summer. Before the release of Inside Out 2, the best opening weekend this year belonged to Godzilla x Kong, The New Empire, which made $194 million globally. The domestic opening is the second best ever for an animated film behind only Pixar's Incredibles 2. The 2018 sequel made $182.6 million in its opening weekend. The film would go on to gross $608.6 million domestically and $1.2 billion globally. Inside Out 2 is already the fourth highest grossing film of the year domestically. Industry professionals predict the movie could make more than $500 million domestically during its box office run. That would put it well ahead of Inside Out, which made $356 million in the U.S. and Canada and 
858.8 million globally. The box office success of Inside Out 2 could spark a turning point for Pixar Animation Studios as they look to the future. This film is the first box office success the company has had since Toy Story 4 made 434 million domestically back in 2019. The opening is more than triple the 50.5 million that Lightyear earned in 2022, and a welcome relief after Elemental earned just $29.6 million during its opening weekend. Just from its opening weekend, the film about Riley's developing emotions has already made more domestically than both of those films did during their entire runs. Inside Out 2 is certified fresh and holds a critic score of 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. Fans are enjoying it at an even higher rate, with 96% giving the film a positive review. With reviews like that from critics and audiences alike, Inside Out 2 could have a lot of staying power at the box office in the coming weeks. Maybe I'll have to go see it. I don't know. I haven't really, I haven't really been following it too closely. For the absolute latest on these stories and all those that did not make it onto today's show, be sure to check out www.nt.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. You can support the entire team behind this show and others by joining the WDWNT Interglobe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. Get access to exclusive content, discounted show and event tickets, and more. A special shout out to all the WIGS members watching who make this show happen each and every week. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Eric Morton saying, enjoy the rest of your today and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow.